Hi, there's scientific proof that snakes could walk in the past. Some people even think that the snake could stand up. But the snake was the smartest animal on the planet. He could even talk. At the end of the video, I will share some secular publications that will prove this. But God's word, the Bible, has to be sufficient for this. So I got a friend of mine here in South America who is allergic to dogs, but basically has dogs for the protection of her family. She has to keep the dogs outside, and whenever a dog walks in, she always asks the dog, who told you that you can come inside? Of course, the dog can't speak. I asked her, what would you do if the dog answers you? God had made all of the animals, and one of the animals could speak. It was a snake. Adam had to give every animal a name. For instance, Adam called the dog Caliph, which means all heart. Now, doesn't that describe a dog perfectly? <laughs> but while he was naming the animals, he found out that he did not have a partner or a wife for himself. Throughout the creation, God had said at the end of the day that it was good what he had made. But when Adam noticed that he was totally single, God said that it was not good. This was the first time in the scriptures that God said that something was not good. So God put Adam to sleep and out of his sight, God made a woman for Adam. God made men and women in the image of him. This was good. So God placed mankind into the Garden of Eden and he placed a tree there called the tree of good and evil. God also commanded mankind to be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Adam and Eve were allowed to eat from the entire garden, but there was one tree that they couldn't eat from and that was the tree of good and evil. Satan indwelt a snake and talked with Eve. I believe that all snakes could talk at that time because in the scriptures there was no mention that Eve was at all surprised at this. So Satan did what Satan normally does and he changed the word of God. He said, yeah, had God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? God never said that. God only forbade them to eat from the one tree. Then Eve answered and said, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Notice the conversation. Satan distorted God's word. Eve corrected it, but also distorted God's word. She added to the word of God. God never told her that they can't touch the fruit of that tree. Now, I can see how Eve could have thought that. Maybe Adam and Eve had heard the instruction of God and decided to avoid the whole thing and just not even touch it. This is how a lot of religious rules are made. In order to obey God's rule, they go beyond what God tells us in the scriptures. Pretty much every church has done this. It's not bad by itself. We just need to know if something we practice is really from the word of God. So Satan at this point directly contradicted God's word and convinced Eve to take the fruit. Eve was enticed by the fruit and took it and gave it to her husband Adam. This is how sin entered the world. It's called the fall of man. God removed Adam and Eve from the garden and God told the snake, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Notice, from that moment on, snakes had to crawl on the ground, and they are cursed. You know, I find it interesting, but wherever I go in the world, most people dislike snakes. I met this guy in India, and he had slept with his cobra on his bed. Here's a picture of him. I believe he had taken his teeth out first. He had also played a tune on a flute to the snake, which the snake liked and would stand up straight. So what is the extra? Well, recently they have discovered that snakes had feet. The Jerusalem Post reports several fossils of an extinct snake group named Nahash, dating back to 100 million years ago. I doubt that number personally were recently uncovered in Patagonia, Argentina. The group is named after the word Nahash that both in Biblical and modern Hebrew indicates the snake. As reported by the New York Times, the fossils seem to suggest that snakes might have lost their front legs 
millions of years earlier than the hind legs. Of course, the newspaper credits evolution. Of course, that would defeat evolution because evolution supposedly makes things get better, not worse. But that's another story. Even CNN reports. Unlike the American government, we prefer not to get our bad news from CNN. Snake evolution has intrigued scientists for years because they knew that these complex vertebrates once had limbs and adapted over time to live without them in dramatic fashion. But newly discovered and well-preserved fossils of snakes, particularly snakes' skulls, suggest they had back legs for an extended period, according to a new study in the journal Science Advances. I will leave links to the Jerusalem Post and CNN articles in the description below. So isn't this amazing? God's word is always true. Now watch this video next and see what famous scientists have said about Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.